Hey guys, here we go. Welcome back. Another video here, same day, recording again. Uh, getting a little bit tired, been, been grinding through a few videos today. Here we go. We're going to do kind of a backup uh, lesson thing. This should be um, kind of like a more of an instructional run through. I'm going to not leave a lot of problems hanging, but we'll be solving it and just checking out some syntax that can help us in our 3.2.4 goals of modifying the uh, course registration files here. So this this can kind of help support us in figuring out that problem here. That I think is is probably the toughest thing from from, from 3.2.4. We'll go over actually some of the end lesson like nine through 19 or whatever, maybe even further than that. Uh, just have some fun, check out some things. Also, we will look at, let's see, what lesson is it? 3.2.3, uh, for loops and practicing syntax while wow, loops, adding to the combo menu, lots of stuff to get to. So anyways, let's dive in. I opened up a new one called for and function. You could probably call it something else. And let's just write us a list. So let's call it a num, num, um, maybe, yeah, we'll go with num list equals, and we'll do our brackets and we'll do one comma two comma three comma four and five, four. And let's just throw another four in there. Okay, there we go. So then we'll do a for loop to print out those numbers. So let's see, for number in num list, each of those numbers do what? Print number. Okay, now it's got a red X. It doesn't like something. Let's see, what is it? It's probably that I forgot my colon there, I think. Hopefully that's it. Let's run it and see if it works. No, doesn't say it. Num list. Oh, I, I spelled it with a B again. Okay, here we go. Run it again. And there we go, and we got one, two, three, four, and four, which is actually the number. So, okay, so there we did a list, and we used a for loop to print that list. So that's how a for loop works, right? It, it does that for a certain number of, uh, of things that it needs to. Oh, sorry, wrong tab here. What else do we want to do? Okay, and we, we talk about for lists, right? So let's see. So that's that's similar to that one. Here's another one we could do um, where we, if we want to add those numbers together, right? So we could say for number in list in num list. And actually I forgot one thing that we'll need here. We'll need a variable X or let's call this uh, sum equals zero. And uh, this time I will remember my colon in there and I'll say sum equals sum plus one. And uh, see if that works, let's run it. And then right down here, we better print sum. So now I'm expecting it to print out five numbers as it goes and as it adds all these up. There we go, one, 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 two, three, four, four. And then one, two, three, four, five. Interesting, I don't know if that worked actually. <laughs> Interesting. Because at the end, oh, plus one, oh, oh, that's not what I wanted to, plus number. Okay, so let's try this now. Let's see if this works. Okay, so there we go. One, two, three, four, four, and then one, three, six, ten, fourteen. So as we add those threes, fours, and twos on there, um, <clears throat> we're printing up our sum. So that's two applications of for loops. Go ahead and check those out. Try them out. Make sure you can get them working. Make sure you understand all that. Then you can use this range function. The range function is actually really interesting. I don't think I will, uh, I will cover exactly in this video, but check it out. Lots of uh, interesting stuff. And then finally, number 11, I will, I will actually leave this one as an exercise um, combining. Actually, I'll do one of them for us. So let's see here. I'll do numbers 1 to 19 inclusive. Now, there's a few different ways you can do this. Uh, let's see. Let's see, let's try this out here. I'm flying blind, haven't actually tried this one yet. Seeing if I can do it here. So for range, uh, so let's see, for number in range, and then my range is one comma 19. Print number, and it's complaining because I think I don't have that. Let's delete this so we don't have to see it anymore. And let's check it out, let's run this thing number and it prints everything one to 18 dang it okay we're gonna have to change it let's make that a 20 
And uh, let's see if that'll work now. Ah, there we go. Okay, now we got to 19, 1 through 19. Perfect. Let's see. I keep clicking on that. So we've done this one. I'll leave a, a couple for you guys to do. Maybe check out some previous examples. Try throwing in some negatives in there, seeing if you can uh, get things going there. Okay, while loops is really good. While loops is interesting. Um, similar to for loops, but slightly different. Uh, maybe I won't talk about them too much. I feel like it's boring on videos when I talk too much and, and don't do enough work here. Um, and so, yes, we can do that. Let's, okay, let's, I tell you what, we'll throw in one while loop on number 13. Create and test while loops that print each of the following numbers from one to five. Let's see, down to one. Uh, odd numbers. You know what, and I tell you, oh, use the mod and, and a conditional, that one sounds tough. Okay, let's see. For, let's do numbers from 10 down to one. So we won't go inclusive. We'll do this. Okay, so we'll say, um, <clears throat> let's get rid of this and we'll say uh, x equals 10, right? I believe so. And then we'll say while x is greater than zero, do the following, print x, and then subtract one from x. So let's see, x, let's see if we can do our keyboard shortcut here. I know we do this with, um, I know we do that with add. Let's see if we could do it with subtract. Okay, so it doesn't didn't seem to equal it. Oh wait, maybe it's like this: x equals minus. Let's see, run that, see if that works. No, equals minus doesn't seem to be working. Okay, so let's just do x equals x minus one right there. Okay, let's run that, and there we go: ten, nine, eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. I believe that was the goal. Numbers from ten down to one inclusive. Okay, good. It did work. Uh, and then finally, our combo menu. So getting that to work multiple times here. So, if, you know, the, obviously one problem with the combo menu is you have to start that program every time you want to order one. You want to place one order, right? You can't order once and then have another person place the order and then have another person place the order. It just takes one order per run. So we might be able to add some condition that would make that always true. Let's try it out here and see if we can do it. Uh, let's see, combo menu, wow, I have so many of these combo menus. Let's just open up one of these. This looks like an old one, but it should be okay. Clearly, I didn't finish everything here. So let's try it out. Um, let's first try adding a bunch of tabs to this. So let's highlight the entire thing and hit tab and see if that worked. Yes, that moved the tab of everything that was highlighted over. Now, of course, it's complaining a bit because the one is there, but then let's do here, let's go up here and let's say while, uh, and let's just see if we can do something fun here. Let's say one equals one, because that's always true. Oops. Let's just see if that works. While one equals one. And it's saying it doesn't like that. Okay, so let's see. Let's go back to PLTW, see if they can give us a little more help. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm, 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 mm -hmm. okay. Yes. Oh, right. So we should have done that. Um, okay. So we did do uh, we did do something earlier where we. Let's see. What does it not like about that? What what happens when I hit run here? Oh uh, well. Oh, you know what? I think it's just a simple error because I wasn't checking for assignment. Let's oh, let's do that and let's see if that works. Well, one equals one. Okay. Now let's run it, and it says, "Oh, what type of sandwich do you want? Let's go with tofu sandwich." Yeah, okay, we're there. And uh, 525, what type of sandwich do you want? Uh, and let's see, let's say beef. All right, and this time 625, okay, good. So it does seem to be working. We were able to get that to uh, endlessly run there. All right, so perfect. So we've talked about for loops and while loops. Hopefully the video is not running too long. We got a little bit more to go here. Let's uh, go and check out functions, right? So for loops and functions are the things that we need here. Oh, look at that. I remember where I was. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, in cloud nine, right? So we still have our for loops and our functions. All right. So let's actually, let's just jump over here. Let's get all this, erase it, and let's just create us a function, right? So let's start with our def, which is how we start functions. Okay. So def, and I believe we can do this like uh, assignment. So we'll make this little function that does our homework for us, or at least lies about doing our homework for us. 
Maybe that's good too. All right, so let's say def assignment and then do I remember how to do this? Probably not. Let's return a number or let's return something saying or print, let's say here, assignment. All right, and let's run it. Okay, and it runs and it's happy. There's no red X's, but it doesn't give us any output, right? That's because I set up this function. So whenever I call to the assignment uh, uh, function, it just prints assignment complete. But the problem is I haven't called that function yet. So let's try that out, see if we can call it and get it to print. So I think in order to call it, all we really need to do, man, it's just print it like that. And let's just see where it run it and see what happens. Ooh, 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 assignment. Did I spell everything right? No, I did not. I have a bit of a problem with that. Assignment, there we go. And it says assignment complete. Oh, again, some typos. Here we go. Assignment complete. All right, there we go. All right, run this. Okay, assignment complete. Ah, good. Okay, let's do one more. And let's do this one. Let's say def uh, assign. Def assignment two, and uh, we'll leave no parameters for that function, and we'll say return assignment complete assignment two complete. Okay, now let's run this, and again it prints assignment one right, but it doesn't print assignment two. Okay, so let's do this. Def oh no, let's say assign two okay now I'm expecting this to print here but let's run it and it says assignment complete and no red X but nothing else so why with the return what's the key here how do I get assignment two to print maybe you know what I, I take it back I will leave some exercises uh, I will leave something for you guys to figure out which is how to get assignment two to print um, Hopefully be able to do that. So let's see, here's some other ones we can try from PLTW. Let's see if there's any good, uh, let's see if there's anything else good here. Mm -mm -mm. I kind of like this arguments and conditions. That one's pretty fun here. And it says, let's see, let's see here. It says create a function X and Q assignment, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So basically it, it, it imagines a scenario where we have bugs in assignment one and assignment two to track down the bugs we're going to create a temporary function to control the flow of execution. In other words, you will write a function to control how and when you call assignment one and assignment two. In this case, temporary function will be called execute assignment. So start debugging. So interesting. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to try to create a third function that can either call assignment one or assignment two, depending upon a value. Let's try it out here. This should be a um, an interesting one. Let's say def either either or so we'll say either assign so def either assignment and let's say let's get us an assignment variable let's say x equals one and uh okay so there we go def either assignment we'll put our semicolon in there and we'll say if x equals one Then we'll do another tab, print, oh no, no, pardon me. And then if x equals one, and I think I'm missing something here, there we go. Uh, 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 let's end like that. And you know what, actually, let's just change this one so we keep these straight. Okay, so we got assignment one and assignment two. So if x equals one, call assignment one. And then l if, in fact, let's go here, l if, x equals two. Now this this red x seems to be persisting, which I'm not sure. Oh, oh, I think it's because. Oh yes, there we go. Okay. Uh, then we could do something like this: assignment meant. Like that, okay. 
And of course, we're missing our double equal here and our double equal down there. Okay. And our colon there. Okay. Hopefully everything's good. Okay. Let's run it. And right now, of course, it's going to print assignment uh, one complete. Assignment one complete. And uh, if we change this to two, it will print assign. Oh, wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. It's not printing anything. Wait. Okay. If we get rid of this, all right. For that, get rid of that. Now it's not printing anything other than this. So, okay. So it actually won't print this because I haven't called it yet, right? So I can come here and I can say uh, either assignment. And now, of course, because uh, x equals 2, it should print assignment 2, which actually isn't working. So we'll change this to a print. Hopefully we're not getting too in lost in the woods on this one. Either assignment, okay, now it says assignment to complete. Okay, so that's good. Uh, <clears throat> okay, so now we can vary assignment one, right? And we can run it and it can say assignment one complete, right? Or we can type in two and it can say assignment two complete. But really what's more interesting is being able to do this would be being able to type in a one there or a two there, and I'm not sure, let's see if PLTW does this. Oh, eh, okay, never mind. So I think the way we have it is, you know what, it's just fine. Let's just leave our X there. Let's just go with that. We could also make it a user input. We could say like X equals user input, and go, go through our whole thing there. But maybe it's easier to just use one or two. All right. So anyways, there's sort of the background knowledge on for loops, functions. Maybe that will help us with uh, three, two, four. That's always the goal. But like I said, it's a tough one. But anyways, good luck. Thanks for watching this video. Hope everything goes well for you.